JoJo review. Please excuse the gray lighting of my room. It's rainy outside. <laughs> What else is new? It's always raining here. This episode is what I would like to call an in-betweener episode. No real action sort of happens, but it sets up for action in the next episode. Obviously the next episode is gonna have the big fight and we're gonna get to see Appa stand and that's gonna be cool. For those of you who don't know, I'm not reading the manga so I don't actually know what's going to happen next. I don't know, I just like watching the JoJo show as opposed to reading it. it feels like it works very well as an anime show that that would be on Adult Swim. So we begin this episode by Runo explaining how this whole drug deal is going down and how they have different teams. Sometimes it's assassination teams and then there's the drug teams and they distribute all the drugs and how he's not actually affiliated with them. And then goes on to explain that he's going to introduce Giorno to the team of people that he personally trusts. Before we actually get introduced to the team, we have this brief scene with these two new characters. And it's kind of a funny scene. I kind of like these two characters. They're obviously going to be the villains, um, but maybe they turn good. There's always, there's always this thing in JoJo where someone's introduced as a villain and then the JoJo, whoever the JoJo is, will turn them good. We kind of got that with Bruno. But it could happen again. So there's this back and forth and they're talking about how Popo committed suicide, so to say. And the driver guy, he seems a little bit like slow, well, like a slow talker. He obviously doesn't pay attention to the road while he's driving, while the other guy has to constantly stop them from driving off the road and dying. <laughs> they're talking about Popo's death and how Popo had a bit of a treasure and nobody knows where the treasure is. So they, basically, the driver decides that he's gonna go search for the treasure and he immediately leaves, like, leaves the car. He's all of a sudden just gone <laughs> and the passenger just has to, like, pull the wheel. He's like, what the, why? So then we go to meet the team. Oh, dream team coming up at ya. We got the quiet bad boy type Abba and then we got the superstitious character, Mista. And then we got the wannabe teacher, Fugo. And ladies and gentlemen, we have a guest character. Straw Hat Luffy himself is in this show. Okay, his name is Norantia, but, but he acts so much like Luffy. You cannot deny. He sits like Luffy, the way that he talks is like Luffy. He's dumb like Luffy, he's happy-go-lucky like Luffy. But that's perfect, because if you're going to search for a treasure, who better than Luffy to help you? You already got your pirate crew together. You got your ship. You're going out. You, you got. You got this. Honestly, so far, Mista is my favorite, just because he's. It's kind of funny to have a superstitious character, and he has bad experiences with the number four, which is it's just so random. And uh, I don't know. I think he, he's the funniest out of all of them. You'd expect me to say Narancia because he reminds me so much of Luffy, but na 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 na. I'ma throw a curveball at you. I like Mr. Better. So Dream Team's on their boat. Bruno actually knows where the treasure is. So they're going after it, and Bruno is very careful to not mention where it actually is. Because he's very aware that other people are going to be searching for it, and it's better to just have one person know where it is. Otherwise, anyone could be... Anyone on your dream team can be captured and tortured to get the information out. Sure enough, somebody's on the boat. It's probably the driver character from from the beginning of the episode because, you know, he disappeared and he's looking for the treasure. So it's obviously going to be him who's on the boat and he's using his stand. And he starts using his stand to capture everybody one by one. And he's hiding somewhere in the cabin of the ship. And they figure this out relatively quickly. Giorno turned, um, I believe it was Fugo's shoe into a fly, or was it was it not Anshia's shoe? It, it was one of their shoes into a fly. And he noticed that they're not dead, and that the others are probably not dead, because the fly is still alive and it's still trying to search for where its owner is, and it's searching near the cabin of the ship. So they're somewhere in there. They know that much. And Bruno kind of looks at Abba and he's like, 
You know, this would be a good opportunity for you to use your stand. You could probably figure this out. And Jonah's like, yeah, you, you can figure this out with your stand? Immediately, Abba's like, <clears throat> I don't want to tell this person my stand. <clears throat> a little bit stubborn, but he has the right to kind of be suspicious. I mean, Jono did show up right when they're about to search for this treasure, you know, there's always that possibility, oh no, what if, what if Jorno is just taking advantage of us to get the treasure? And so I was thinking to myself, okay, all we have to do is go to the cabin. Like, what are they, what are they gonna do? We'll just charge the cabin, we'll get our friends back, we'll beat this guy up. Jorno's like, no, it's obviously a trap. If we go near the cabin, it's, so it's gonna set off something and he's gonna kill us. And that was like, Bitch, you don't tell me what gonna kill me. You are probably a traitor. You got blonde hair. I don't like you. So Jonah is like, this bitch. <laughs> this bitch over here. All right, fine. You got a stand that can solve this whole thing. I'm gonna trust that. And he just runs towards the cabin and purposely sets off the trap so they Abba can see that he wasn't lying. Jonah obviously goes towards the trap knowing that there's a possibility, yeah, he could be insta-killed, but it wouldn't matter as long as Abba, having his stand, being able to defeat the other, the, the evil guy's stand. But Jonah takes that risk, he sets off the trap, and these hands come up, grab him, and it looks like there's like a little tiny dagger that kind of looks like a rapier and it goes straight into Giorno's back and uh, it's kind of weird because it looks like it starts sucking Giorno dry or like his veins start popping out of his face so it's doing something bad to Giorno and Eva notices and Bruno's like oh my god Eva gets up and he's like you st stubborn asshole. Then the last scene we get of Abba, he's, he's pulling out a stand and we're getting the impression that he's going to save Giorno and he's going to use the stand to try to bring out the, the dude, the driver dude who is doing all of this. We don't actually get to see Abba stand uh, at the end, but we kind of see like his head like his head section of his stand. So we'll be expecting the actual fight in the next episode and they're gonna save their friends or at least save Mista because he's the best one. It's honestly hard for me to imagine all of these characters playing a, a main character role or, or like a close to main character role. I don't know, how many, how many do you think, how many characters do you think is good to be pushing the plot forward at a time. Like, I can understand pushing some, when you introduce a character, pushing them into the background after a certain amount of time and then maybe bringing them back later, but I'm not sure how many characters at a time is good for the story because I think focus is really important in a story and you get focus a lot easier when you're sticking with like three main characters, you know? But uh, tell me what you think. Right now we have like five main characters, or six actually, I guess. Six main characters that we kind of have to juggle around for this pirate treasure story. And it seems a lot easier to follow now that three of those characters have been captured. But we'll see where we go from here. We'll see the fight in the next episode, which I'm sure is going to be very interesting. I'm excited to learn about Abba's stand. I want to know about the other guys' stands too, especially Mista, of course. So we'll get back to this next time, and I will see you guys then. Thank you to everyone watching. Remember to like the video, comment below. I'll talk to you guys later. Bye! Program restart.